This footage shows a Convair B-36 Peacemaker aircraft making a low pass over Fort Worth, Texas, as the strategic bomber completes what is known as a buzz job. Recorded by Lieutenant Colonel Frank F. Kleinwichter, Jr., the flight crew was reportedly showing off for a firefighter convention visiting the nearby airbase. Panic residents flooded the wing headquarters with irate phone calls. Many thought the plane had crashed. Others complained that the B-36 had set fire to a telephone pole and had blown shingles off their roofs. One man even claimed that his TV antenna had gotten stuck, sucked into a jet pod. The B-36 The Peacemaker was a strategic bomber created by Condair, used exclusively by the U.S. Air Force between 1949 and 1959. The aircraft would go on to become the largest mass-produced piston-engine plane in history. Featuring a notable wingspan of 230 feet, it was the first American bomber capable of carrying nuclear arms without additional adaptations to its bomb base. With a range of 10,000 miles and the capacity for an 87,200-pound payload, the Peacemaker could carry out intercontinental missions without refueling. It entered service in 1948 and soon became the primary nuclear weapons delivery aircraft for the Strategic Air Command until its eventual replacement, the B-52 Strato Fortress. By the end of its production run in August 1954, the U.S. Air Force received over 380 of these planes. However, it was never actually used in combat. In fact, the aircraft served as a significant deterrent to nuclear war. It did, however, strike terror in the residents of Fort Worth. The Plot The incident was extensively covered by Dario Leone, but initially reported on by Lieutenant Colonel Frank F. Kleinwechter on the 7th Wing B-36 Association website. According to the Lieutenant Colonel, the B-36 aircraft demonstrated how fast it had achieved liftoff. Occasionally, tests such as these were conducted with minimum fuel. Regulations stated that they had to fly at least four times per month and register at least 100 hours of flight per year. The flight crew, led by Thad Neal, wanted to complete this requirement before going on a scheduled leave of absence. Therefore, they hardly arranged a flight demonstration to claim their time. Kleinrichter was contacted and asked if he'd stand by to film the event. Although he assumed they would perform a low flyover, he was not informed that it would be conducted at such a low altitude. During setup, he was informed that the team was instructed to carry out a maximum performance takeoff and return to base in a low pass overall on minimum fuel. Needless to say, every move had to be precise. The buzz job incident. The plane taxied south and prepared for takeoff. Full power was set. The plane stuttered and skidded a bit once the brakes were released. Yet soon enough it took off. The B-36 achieved an altitude of 4,000 feet, flying towards the northern point of Eagle Mountain Lake and after prepared to return to base. The crew conducted a shallow dive at full power, almost grazing the runway. Although unconfirmed, Kleinwechter estimated their speed to be around 180 miles per hour, if not more. He sat on the nose for ideal visibility in filming. Allegedly, even operators on the ground ducked as the plane fast approached and almost smacked the concrete. Next, they headed towards the town. According to Kleinwechter, quote, Thad had originally planned on flying directly over his house. Between the base and West Ridgely, the ground rises maybe 100 feet or so. Thad could not get a true read on his house from the low altitude, so he flew down the road where Ridge Mar Mall sits today. Climbing over the small ridge, he soon spotted his house just a wee bit off to the left. Instead, they crossed a ridge and decreased their altitude, approaching Mary's Creek. They then overflew Highway 377 at a very low altitude and circled back. On the front yard of her home, a woman waited to film the plane's approach when it zoomed so low she dropped her camera. Kleinwechter's wife was set to record from her back porch. She successfully filmed their second pass by about a block away as they flew down the hill. Kleinwechter recalled flying by the highway, stating, quote, As we flew down the highway, I recall seeing cars stop and people head for the ditches. Several years later, I was telling the story to some co-workers at General Dynamics, and one man told me that he was one of those that had sought shelter in a ditch. Aftermath The remarkable flight in 1954 reportedly lasted six hours. 
They returned to base and landed the aircraft, entirely unaware that their low-level flight over urbanized Fort Worth would cause so many conflicts. One individual phoned in and demanded repairs to his TV antenna, apparently lost to the passing plane. He claimed a jet pod yanked it from his room, and the jet exhaust blew up a phone pole. Furthermore, several residents claimed the plaster in their homes cracked or suddenly fell, sending in pictures as supporting evidence. The outrage increased to the point that General Jack Ryan fined Thad Neal and his team a whole $250, considerably lower than the actual cost of the alleged damages. Privately, General Ryan commended the crew for their outstanding, albeit risky, bus job. <laughs>